we're asked to simplify 9p to the 2 thirds, all of that over the square root of 4p cubed. So let's just do this step by step. The first thing we can do is say, well, if it's 9p to the 2 thirds, that's the same thing as 9 to the 2, 9 to the 2 thirds times p to the 2 thirds. That's what this top part can be simplified to. Now the bottom part, we can rewrite the bottom part right here. The square root of 4p to the third, this is the exact same thing as 4p to the third to the 1 half power. This is the same thing. The square root of 4p to the third is the same thing as 4p to the third to the 1 half power. So given that, we can do the same thing that we did on the numerator. We can say, well, this is the same thing as 4 to the 1 half, 4 to the 1 half times p to the third to the 1 half times p to the third to the 1 half power. Now let's see if we can simplify this even more. So this is going to be equal to, let's do the denominator first here. So what's 4 to the 1 half power? What's the principal root of 4? Well, 2 squared is 4, so it's 2. The positive root is 2. And then p to the third, and then that to the 1 half, that's the same thing as p to the 3 times 1 half, or p to the 3 halves p to the 3 over 2. 9 to the 2 thirds. See, the cube root of 9 isn't anything easy. Well, actually, we could think about it this way. You could say it's 9 squared. So we can view 9 to the 2 thirds. Let me do it this way. This is the best way to think about it. This 9 to the 2 thirds, one could write it. I'm kind of um, making it unsimplifying it, but it'll help us calculate it, what it actually means. 9 to the 2 thirds is the same thing as 9 squared. 9 squared to the 1 third power, right? Because 2 times 1 third is 2 thirds. And then you have that, of course, times p to the 2 thirds. And this is going to be equal to 9 squared is 81. So it's 81 to the 1 third power times p to the 2 thirds times p to the 2 thirds. Now, instead of writing this 2 and this p to the 3 halves down here, let me just write it as negative exponents. Or even, let's write, just write it like this. A 2 in the denominator is the same thing as 2 to the negative 1, or 1 half. So this right here, if I want to write in the numerator, the same thing as 1 half. That and that are the same thing. And p to the 3 halves in the denominator is the same thing as p, as p to the negative p to the negative 3 halves. So this whole expression so far has been simplified to this right over here. And let me copy and paste it. I'll work on the next line now. So let me copy it and paste. Bring it down right over there. Let's see if we can simplify this even more. So let's think about 81. Let's see if we can write it as, where well, essentially when we take something to the cube when we take the cube root of something, we're taking some. When we take something to the one third power, we're taking the cube root of it. So we have to find some numbers, or maybe we can factor it into things that do have cube roots and other things that don't. So 81 is well, it's divisible by three. It's three times 27, which is three times nine, which is three times three. So 81 is three to the fourth power, or it's three multiplied by itself three times. So we could rewrite this 81 to the one third. We could rewrite it as 3 times 3 times 3 to the, well, I'll write it like this, times 3 to the 1 third. That's the same thing as 81. And then let's think about this, these p's. And I'm doing more steps than I would do if I had to do it on a piece of paper, because I really want you all to understand kind of what's going on here. So we have a p to the 2 thirds times p to the negative 3 halves. So that's going to be times p to the 2 thirds Two thirds minus three halves power, and then so we did the p's, and then we just have the times one half, times one half. Now this right over here, this is the same thing. This is the same thing as we could just view this as three times three times three times three. So it's the same thing as three times three times three to the one third, times three to the one third. Right? We've done this multiple times, times. The 2 two thirds minus 3 halves, let's just work that out. Actually, 3 halves is a larger number, so let's just say it's the negative of 3 halves minus 2 thirds, which is equal to the negative if we use 6 as a common denominator. If we use 6 as a common denominator, 3 halves with 6 as a denominator is 9 sixths minus 
4 over 6. That's what 2 thirds is equal to. So 9 minus 4 is 5, 6. But then we have this negative out here. So it equals negative 5, 6. So times p to the negative 5, 6 power times 1 half, times that last 1 half over here. Now, 3 times 3 times 3, or 27 to the 1 third, the cube root of 27 is 3. So this right here simplifies to 3. And then 3 to the 1 third, that's the cube root of 3. So we can say have 3, and then this right here is the cube root of 3. The cube root of 3. So we get 3 times the cube root of 3 times p to the negative 5, 6. So sometimes you might want to write the p out here in front of the radical. That tends to be a simpler way. Actually, let me do that. So I'll write the p to the f negative 5, 6. p to the negative 5, 6. Then I'll write the radical. So times the cube root of 3. And then all of that times 1 half. Or we could say all of that multiplying times 1 half. Or you could just divide it by 2. And we've simplified it about as far as you can go. You could view it as 3 halves. You could say 3 halves is 1.5 p to the negative 5, 6 times the cube root of 3. If you wanted to, you could calculate the cube root of 3, multiply that times 1 half, give you some decimal number, times p to the negative 5, 6. And that's about as simplified as this thing can get.